In this video, we will talk about the SF1 reaction and its mechanism. Here is a nucleophilic substitution reaction happening between tertiary alcohol halide and water to give the corresponding alcohol as a product. Based on our understanding of SN2 reactions, we would expect the rate of this particular reaction is very slow because of two main reasons. One is water is a very poor nucleophile. And the second reason is that this being a tertiary alcohol halide, which has lots of steric hindrance, we know that this is not going to undergo SN2 reaction. But it turns out that this reaction is surprisingly fast. In fact, it is over 1 million times much faster than a reaction between methyl bromide and water. Now, what is the reason why this particular reaction is going to be fast? We could think that this particular reaction goes through a different mechanism than the SN2 reaction. And this mechanism that we are going to call as SN1 reaction, where S is going to stand for substitution and N is going to stand for nucleophilic and the number one right here is going to stand for unimolecular. So on the whole, this is going to be called as a unimolecular substitution reaction. Now, in order to determine the mechanism for any particular reaction, we have to understand the different factors which is going to affect the rate of the reaction. And also, we have to know the configuration of the final products that are obtained in the reaction. For this particular reaction, they have found the rate to be proportional to the concentration of the alcohol halide and it was not affected by the concentration of the nucleophile. So which means as you make a change in the concentration of this alcohol halide, the rate changed. Or if you double the concentration of this alcohol halide, the rate of the reaction doubled. Whereas there was no change obtained when they increased or decreased the concentration of this nucleophile. So on the whole, this particular reaction is following the first order reaction. This is the very first piece of evidence that they were able to get. Next, they also found out that the tertiary alcohol halides were more reactive in an SN1 reaction, whereas the primary and as well as the methyl halides did not even react. So the tertiary alcohol halides are more reactive, whereas the primary and the methyl halides did not even undergo any reaction. And finally, they also found out that when they did the substitution reaction with an, uh, with an alcohol halide where the halogen is connected to an asymmetric center such as this, they found out that it resulted in two stereoisomers, one with the same relative configuration as that of the initial uh, alcohol halide and the other one with an inverted configuration. So two stereoisomers are obtained, one with same configuration and the other one with inverted configuration. Based on all of these important evidences and information, they were able to propose a mechanism for SN1 reaction. And this is how it goes. First, to begin with, the tertiary alcohol halide undergoes um, the formation of carbocation, wherein the carbon halogen bond is going to break, in which the Br minus is going to be the leaving group. This step right here is a slow step and it is the ray determining step. It forms the carbocation. So here is the carbocation that is formed. And in the next step, the nucleophile, which is water in this case, is, is going to go and attack this carbocation, leading to the formation of protonated alcohol. Water will go and attack this carbocation. And this is a fast step, and it leads to the formation of protonated alcohol. And in the last step, a base comes and abstracts this hydrogen to neutralize the positive charge on oxygen to give the final product, which is the alcohol in this case. Suppose if you're going to start with an alcohol halide where this carbon right here is a chiral center, then it can lead to the formation of two stereoisomers because the nucleophile can go and attack in either direction due to the planar nature of carbocation. But for this particular reaction, since there is no chiral center, there is no stereochemical implications for this particular reaction. And therefore, it's just going to lead to the formation of only one product. 
Here is the reaction coordinate for the SN1 reaction. And you can see that there are two different steps that are involved in it. The first step is the formation of the carbocation. So here is the carbocation intermediate. And the formation of carbocation intermediate is the slowest step and it is the rate determining step. And as you can see from the reaction, coordinate, it's very clear that it is only the alkyl halide that is participating in the rate determining step. The nucleophile only comes in the second part of the reaction, second step of the reaction to form the product. Here is the detailed explanation of why a pair of enantiomers is obtained in an SN1 reaction. When you start with an alkyl halide where the halogen is attached to an asymmetric center. Okay, let's say this is your alcohol halide and what's the first step in the SN1 reaction? It's going to form the carbocation, in which case the leaving group is going to leave. And here is the carbocation that's formed. The carbocation is generally a planar intermediate so where all of these atoms, this carbon, and the atoms that are connected here, they're all going to lie in the same plane. And therefore, when the nucleophile comes in, let's say water is our nucleophile. When the nucleophile comes in, it can go attack this carbocation in two different directions. It can get, go attack from here or from here, thereby leading it to the formation of two enantiomers. Now let's draw the product when the nucleophile comes in and attacks the carbocation in this direction. So here is our product, in which case, to begin with, a protonated alcohol will be formed, okay, which is going to undergo deprotonation to give the corresponding alcohol as the final product. So basically a base comes and abstracts this hydrogen and that's going to neutralize the positive charge on oxygen. And similarly, on the other side, if this nucleophile goes and attacks this carbocation, then you will get the product with the opposite configuration, which is going to look like this. So on the whole, when you perform an SN1 reaction of an alkyl halide where there is an asymmetric center that is attached to the leaving group, let's say that this is your asymmetric center, in which case it's going to lead to the formation of two stereoisomers, right? So one with exactly the same configuration. So here is the product with exact, exactly the same configuration as your initial alkyl halide. And this is the product with inverted configuration. Although you can expect both of these products are formed in equal amounts in an SN1 reaction, a greater amount of the product with the inverted configuration is obtained in most cases. So this is going to be formed more. Typically, you can expect about 50 to 70 percent of the product that is formed in an SN1 reaction is going to be the inverted product. Okay, if the reaction leads to equal amounts of these two stereoisomers, then it's going to be complete racemization. But if it's going to lead to something like this, where there is 50 to 70% of the product, then it's going to be called as partial racemization. Now let's ask ourselves a very important question. Why more of the inverted product is formed in an SN1 reaction? Now let's imagine that this is the carbocation that's formed from an alkyl halide and in an SN1 reaction. And the very next step is for the nucleophile to go and attack this carbocation. Right? So let's say that our nucleophile is here and it has now got two chances. It can go and attack from this direction and it can go and attack from this direction, leading to the formation of the products with two stereoisomers. Now, here is the most important thing that you have to keep in mind. When the leaving group leaves from an alkyl halide, you form the carbocation. But now where is the leaving group going to go? The leaving group is not going to go get diffused away from the molecule completely. Instead, it is going to stay closer to the molecule closer to the carbocation, forming the intimate ion pair. 
right? Because this carbocation is, has got a positive charge on it and this bromine, which is a leaving group, has got negative charge on it. There is kind of some kind of attractions between these two species. Therefore, when the nucleophile wants to go and attack this carbocation, it chooses to go more on this side of this molecule because the Br- is blocking the approach of this nucleophile from this side. And therefore, you get more of the inverted product.